Hello, and welcome to this training video for the Level 1 Waiver Changes that will be effective July 1st of 2022. This training is designed to provide information about new services that have been added to the Level 1 Waiver, changes to home delivered meals, and the new budget structure. Hi everyone, so thankful to be with all of you here today for this great training. My name is Emily Martinez, and I'm the Director of Community Services for the Mahoning County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Let's start by talking about our new Level 1 Waiver Services. Effective July 1st, 2022, the following services will be added to the Level 1 Waiver. Self-directed transportation, participant-directed goods and services, also known as PDGS, functional behavioral assessment, clinical therapeutic intervention, and family participant stability assistance. Let's talk a little bit about self-directed transportation. This new service will enhance a person's independence and it's available around the clock, including weekends and holidays. This is intended to accommodate on-demand and scheduled transportation needs. It's intended to allow people the option to travel independently. Self-directed transportation can be done in two different ways. The first is through purchase of prepaid vouchers, cards, passes, or tokens to access modes of ground transportation like Uber, Lyft, buses, cabs, etc. And the second is to use someone the person knows like a family member or neighbor to transport. The person chosen does need to be hired and paid through the financial management service entity. Let's talk a little bit about Participant Directed Goods and Services, PDGS. This includes services, equipment, or supplies that aren't provided through the Medicaid state plan or another waiver service. PDGS does not require that equipment and services be provided by a Medicaid certified provider. The services, equipment, or supplies have to be directly linked in the person's ISP, Individual Service Plan, to a need that's clearly identified through their assessment. The services or equipment or supplies are required to decrease the need for other Medicaid home and community-based services, advance their participation in the community, increase safety at home, increase independence at home, and improve cognitive, social, or behavioral functions, or assist to develop or maintain personal, social, or physical skills. In the Level 1 waiver, the PDGS spending limit is $2,500 per waiver year. It's important to note that this is different than PDGS in the self waiver, which does not have a specific spending limit for PDGS. The self waiver, PDGS is only limited by the cap, the $45,000 budget cap for adults and the $30,000 budget cap for children. County boards need to have a local review process for any PDGS items that are totaling $500 or more for one item or request. All PDGS purchases must be identified, authorized in the individual service plan, and shared with the financial management services entity on the spending plan. Participant Directed Goods and Services, or PDGS. Items not permitted. Experimental treatments, including items considered by the Federal Food and Drug Administration as experimental or investigational or not approved to treat a specific condition. New equipment, supplies, or repair of previously approved equipment or supplies that have been damaged because of confirmed misuse, abuse, or negligence. Equipment, supplies, and devices of the same type for the same person, unless there is a documented change in the person's condition that warrants the replacement home modifications of general utility, or add to the total square footage of the home, pools, spas, or saunas, food, tobacco, or alcohol, items used solely for entertainment or recreational purposes, items that are illegal or otherwise prohibited through federal or state regulations, internet service, and items of general utility. All PDGS purchases are paid for by the Financial Management Services Entity. Functional Behavioral Assessment A Functional Behavioral Assessment, or FBA, 
can help a person understand why they do things that they do. It is important to help someone who sometimes does unsafe actions when they feel upset or stressed. This assessment looks at all kinds of things that may influence how someone acts, like where they live, who they live with, how often they get to go out, and what medications they take. Then the assessment is used to make a plan to help the person get rid of the behavior that might be harmful to themselves or others. This service, service is limited to one FBA for up to 1,500 per 12 month waiver span. Clinical therapeutic intervention. This service can help a person meet the needs identified in the functional behavioral assessment. It includes things like help from a professional, like a counselor or psychologist, help making plans to stop a challenging behavior, training for people who support the person on how to carry out the plan. It is meant to help someone stop doing things that harm themselves, harm others, or damage property. Participant Family Stability Assistance. This service is for a person and their family members who live with them. It covers payment for fees or materials related to training and counseling that helps families live together. The training and counseling can be related to ways to build up their ability to direct services, how family members can best support the person, avoiding or delaying an unwanted out of home placement, Participant Family Stability Assistance does not cover travel cost or prohibitive or experimental treatments. Changes to home delivered meals. There will be three types of meals, the Individual Service Plan or ISP and Cost Projection Tool or CPT will need to identify which type is authorized. The standard meal is reimbursed at the rate of $7.20. A kosher meal is reimbursed at the rate of $8.68. A therapeutic meal is reimbursed at the amount of $8.68. Finally, we will talk about Level 1 waiver budgets. Effective July 1st of 2022, the Level 1 waiver budgets will change per 12-month waiver span. Adults will have up to $45,000 to utilize for services per waiver span. Children will have up to $30,000 to utilize for services per waiver span. Children include people up to age 22 unless no longer eligible for educational services based on graduation prior to age 22. These budgets will take effect at the person's next waiver year that begins on or after July 1st of 2022. Until their current span ends, they will have the budget flexibilities afforded by Appendix K. New services can be added to current plans through the team process. The emergency funding benefit will no longer be available. Thank you for participating in today's training on the Level 1 waiver changes that will be effective July 1st of 2022. Resources that are available to you are the updated Level 1 Handbook and the Level 1 Handout. These resources will be saved on the DODD website for quick access. To find the newly amended Level 1 rule, you may click on the link provided on this page or search OAC 5123-9 Dash zero six in the Forms and Rules tab on the DODD website. If you have questions about changes to this waiver, you may submit them to Waiver Policy TA at dodd.ohio.gov. Thanks and have a great day.